when I was younger and you know I'd like ride around in the car going to school it was just always these things that I would see on the drive that fascinated me it was you know just kind of like the art of everyday things you know and I think that paying attention to architecture and just the environment around me and how murals fit into that and signs and illustrations on photocopied show flyers and like it's just this constant amorphous I don't know gallery that we live in like I hate to say that the world is art but it pretty much is S signs of life you know it's it's kind of breathing life into this environment um, you know, we live in the Northeast and there's a lot of red brick and stone and uh, sometimes it can be a, a little foreboding. Um, so to have these like little bits of unexpected color or like little things that you'll kind of just catch out of the corner of your eye help to just, I don't know, wake you up a little bit, I guess. I think it's probably one of the most important things for me um, in creating work of any type is, is accessibility. My whole life, like I've always gone to museums and galleries and things like that. And there was always this question of like, oh, how do I get my work in a gallery? And I've, I've done a few, they, they kind of like limit my mobility. Cause it's like, okay, I've done this canvas that's 36 by 48, or I've done a drawing on an 11 by 17 sheet of paper and you put it on a, in a frame and you hang it on a wall and then people come and they look at it. Working outside in, in any manner, just totally, blows the doors off making it exclusive in any way you know you can't buy it it's just there for anybody to enjoy if you want to own it just take a picture of it and hang it on your wall you know there you go this old timer whose name was Johann Bierman um, and he painted a number of the murals in Providence that are I think there's still a couple around so we learned from him the proper process to approach these jobs with whether it's like generating the art um, you know scaling it correctly how to like assemble and build a swing stage to hang off a building like all these crazy skills that I don't really know where else you would you would learn them unless it's from someone that had been doing this and had kind of like handed it down and like I've, I've always liked old cartoons I've always liked uh, you know well executed like fun slightly funky like idiosyncratic signs and lettering and stuff like that so i don't know like signage from the 1970s anything from the 1970s um th like thematically what i like to do most but it's not always the most common or most frequent um is any like large-scale painting with some degree of a social justice like dynamic or, or like approach um i think that that has and can have a, a profound impact on the communities that they're placed in it, some of the stuff definitely generates uh some conversations comfortable and uncomfortable um but at the end of the day i think that you know everyone's the better for it for for like having this stuff in front of them and having to talk about it. Having done all that like graffiti in the, the background, <laughs> I, I approached it with a lot less fear because I knew that it was possible to paint these large things. Like it's not, it's, it's nothing. Someone said starting is the hardest part. I mean, it's, it's totally true. Um, also knowing when you're done is, can be pretty difficult. But a piece of art is never really finished. It's just kind of like when you're finished with it, you know, because you can keep working on something forever and it'll go through like a hundred different possible points in time where it could have been done. They'll never be done with it. Um, but in terms of starting, I mean, you know, like just make a line, you know, take a pencil, make a line, uh, write a word. Think about that word, think about the line, think about where you want it to go next. It just seems really co like commanding, you know, like just start, like you don't want to do that. There's got to be some better way of like coaxing that creativity out or like that desire to create something, you know, like everybody has that in them inherently. Like it's, it's just a part of human nature. 
And it's like, okay, well, how do you find, how do you locate and find this? And then like extract it in a way that that person feels comfortable uh, releasing it. Sometimes people's creativity is like stifled, um, whether it's by, you know, people around them or like circumstances in their life, or maybe they were told that it's not a valuable skill or whatever else. So they just kind of like press it down. Anything that's like devoid of, of classical training and it's really just like the individual's desire to create without um, the parameters of like society's idea of what creative expression is, you know? You start to create these like really wonderful things.